Now that we've completed our key primary inputs, the rig builder, earth builder, path builder, wellbore builder, and our auxiliary features, it's now time to move on to a finer level of detail, which starts with the string builder. And there's a separate string builder for each of the operations in the well. And of course, an op might involve the 16 inch hole section, the 13 and 3 eighths casing installation, 12 and a quarter inch hole section, etc. So let's just start by looking at the 12 and a quarter inch hole section and how we go about manipulating the string that's used to drill that interval. If we cl double click on the 12 and a quarter hole run one here on the summary grid, it brings up our primary controls for performing calculations. And we're going to go into detail how to manipulate these parameters in a different section. Right now what we want to focus on is manipulating the string. And you can see that there's a scale drawing of the string on the left adjacent to our key plots across uh, to the right of our well sketch. Now the string can be edited by clicking on the builder and in this mode there are some features that we can manipulate but I'm going to come back and revisit those later. What we're going to start with is the advanced panel and by clicking on advanced it pulls up a dialog that shows me all the different components within the string scaled to the wellbore that they're being installed in. Starting with the bit and moving up to drill collars, heavyweight drill pipe, and then the drill pipe itself. By default, in a 12 and a quarter inch hole, ERA is going to assume that we have 60 feet of nine and a half collars, 90 feet of eight and a quarter collars, and 500 feet of five inch heavyweight followed by 5 inch 1950 S135 NC50 drill pipe to surface. We're going to look at how to edit those string components in a minute, but before we do that, I want to draw your attention to this dialog box called String Properties, where BHA pressure drop can be entered. By default, there's no description for the BHA pressure drop, but this is where we would logically apply a definition for the BHA pressure drop. By default, we're assuming that there's 600 PSI pressure drop through the downhole tools. Now, I might want to go into more detail and separate that out into perhaps MWD and LWD and maybe RSS or motor. And you can see that, that all of those components are now in this table and I could assign a fixed pressure drop to each one of those components if I so choose. Right now I'm just going to call everything VHA. Now if I don't want to define the pressure drop as a fixed 600 PSI, what I could do is double click on the total flow area, this gray shaded box, which would pull up a screen that allows me to enter in the number and size of nozzles if I wanted to characterize this as a nozzle. Let's just say that I had a 1 32nd nozzle. Effectively, that would be effectively 0.78 square inches of total flow area. Now, I could just totally disregard the nozzles and choose to enter in whatever total flow area best represents the pressure drop through my, through my tools, if I happen to know that information. Now if I do that, I probably don't want the fixed pressure drop, so I should enter in a zero. And make sure you click enter so that I've removed this additional fixed pressure loss and I'm not double dipping myself on variable pressure drop through this nozzle or fixed pressure drop as a fixed 600 PSI. I can do something similar for the bit. If I click on the bit, it pulls up a dialog that similarly defines a fixed pressure loss, or if I want a variable pressure loss based on the number of nozzles, then I can do so here. But for the time being, we'll just stick with the 600 PSI fixed pressure loss. If I move back to the string builder, and I want to edit a particular component. If I click on this drill collar, for example, and instead of running 60 feet of collars, I'm only running 40 feet of 9.5 inch collars. That's very easy to edit within this screen. You can see details for the tubular are also outlined here. 
If these don't happen to match the particulars of the colors that I'm running, I always have the ability to manually enter any of these inputs. Or if there is a drill collar that's in my library that would be a suitable replacement, I can do that by clicking on Add Drill Collar. And it really should say Add or Replace Drill Collar. And type in the size that you prefer to use in the library. So let's say it's a nine and three quarter inch collar instead of a nine and a half inch collar. If I click on that tubular and then drag it off of the table and onto my string, whichever component it's hovering across will replace that component. So right now, I happen to be located above the eight and a quarter inch collars. If I drag a little bit deeper, I'm now right above the nine and a half inch collars. If I was to click this control on the left hand side, I could zoom in and get a closer look at the bottom hole assembly. And you can see now I've got my nine and a half inch collars and my nine and three quarter inch collars. If I want to delete my nine and a half inch collars, I can do so by right clicking on that component and hitting the delete key. If I'm not happy with the length of drill collars that ERA is assumed by default, then I can also go back to the screen and manually enter that here. Now likewise, in a similar fashion, I can edit the drill pipe by clicking on Add Drill Pipe. And let's just say that I'm going to have a tapered drill string. Five and a half by five inch. Right now there's five inch drill pipe in the string, but I'm going to add some five and a half, 21.9 pound S135, five and a half full hole. I find that in the library, and I can now drag it on over to the screen. Oh, hold on just a second. Stretch this up. In this section, I'm going to make shorter so that I can see the top of it. Go back to add drill pipe. Now when I drag it onto the screen, you can see that I have a tapered string. The red shaded areas give you control to stretch and lengthen any particular section of tubular, which comes in quite handy when we're doing our engineering analysis.